Hey, Tommy from the Run Testers with another running shoe review. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Puma Liberate Nitro 2. Let's take a look. The Puma Liberate Nitro 2 costs £105 or $120, weighs in at 203 grams or 7.1 ounces for men in a size 8, and the drop is 6 millimeters. The Liberate Nitro 2 is a lightweight shoe designed for shorter distance sessions and racing. The lean design combines a thin mono mesh upper with an updated nitro foam midsole built to be firmer than the first version. That nitrogen injected midsole aims to produce a responsive ride and a modest level of cushioning. The brand's popular Puma Grip rubber covers the outsole for increased traction and durability and there are reflective elements for added visibility at night. The latest version also features a minimal increase in the amount of midsole cushioning to improve comfort and energy return. Bit for me in the shoes, so I'm a size eight. This shoe is a size eight. Uh, I found it completely fine. Um, there was a little bit of room in the toe box for me, not loads. I think the thing about this shoe is that it's designed for speed. It's designed to be lean and not have loads of excess features and padding and stuff on it. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty lean shoe. Um, and I don't have particularly wide feet. I don't have narrow feet either. I sort of sit in the middle and I found it quite comfortable. But if you did have wider feet, you might have an issue with this shoe because it's a bit, a bit more narrow than uh, some of the other shoes in the Puma lineup. Um, so keep that in consideration. I didn't have any issues with the toe box though. Uh, I felt that there was plenty of space in the toe box. It's mainly around the midfoot section that I found it a bit narrower. Um, but I would, I would definitely say that the size eight that I've got is perfect for my size eight feet in the UK. <music> So I have done about 50K in this shoe. It's quite a tricky shoe to do a lot of distance in because it's not really designed for longer distances. It's a shoe that's really focused on those shorter distance training runs at speed uh, and racing as well. Um, the runs that I've done in it have varied a bit. I've done um, easy runs where my pace was about five minute kilometers. Um, and I have also done uh, intervals, track and a park run in this shoe. And what I found about it is that it it's a really nice, fast shoe. Um, it is probably, it, interestingly, it's, it's got a six millimeter to drop. I didn't really feel that in this shoe. It doesn't feel like there's a big drop in it. it. Feels a lot more minimal than that to me, but there is a nice bit of cushioning in it, which was surprising. I didn't think I'd feel um, the level of cushioning that I got from this. It's not massive, it's not a cushioned shoe. It's definitely not a shoe that you do lots and long distance runs in. Um, well, some people might, but I wouldn't. If you're a more general runner, then it's definitely not a shoe that you do daily training in or, or long runs. Um, what I found is that over those easy runs, it was fine. It's a pretty versatile shoe. Uh, I definitely wouldn't want to go over 15K in this shoe. Uh, it's just not enough cushioning in it for me. Um, and. I don't just wouldn't find it comfortable over that distance. Um, you can really feel the ground with this shoe, which is a big plus for some people. Not for me. Uh, I like a bit more padding in the shoe, and this is probably as minimal of a shoe as I would go. Um, when I used it on track, it was fantastic. Really good track shoe. Definitely a good shoe if you're the sort of runner that um, either doesn't like to use carbon plate shoes uh, or the sort of runner that likes to use carbon plate race shoes for racing um, but doesn't want to use them for their training runs which is fairly common these days a lot of people don't like to use their carbon plate shoes for, for training sessions um, so if that's you then this is great because it's really it's a fast shoe it's very light it's very nimble um, on track it just has a lovely pickup you can really pick up the pace nicely in there um, and it's just, yeah, just really nice and light. Uh, when I used it for park run, it was also great. Didn't quite get as good a time as I, I, I'd normally get with my carbon plate shoes, um, but I mean, that's not necessarily a shoe, it might just be me on the day, but I didn't enjoy it as much for um, park run as I do with my carbon plate shoes. I like to have a little bounce uh, like from the plate or the, the foam that's in those, but it's great. It's great, great for those runs, and I definitely, if I was, Using a non complex shoe for park run or a 5k race or 10k race, this is a great option for it. It just feels very light and poppy on the feet and you can really pick up the pace nicely. Um, for intervals and things like that, it's very good as well. You can really pick up the pace nicely and when you're doing these slower sections, maybe you're having a two or three minute rest in between intervals or something like that, it's quite comfortable as well. So you don't feel like you're, you're running around on a slow bit 
in an uncomfortable shoe, you it has enough cushioning to deal with that as well. So it's a very versatile shoe for that respect. But I only say it's versatile up to a level because once you get, for me, past that sort of 10K, 15K mark, I I, I think I'd, I'd really want another shoe because I'm just not getting the cushioning that I'd want from um, my training shoes. And a lot of the sessions that I'm doing at the moment, so if I'm doing an interval session at the moment, because I'm marathon training for Burning Marathon, I, they tend to be quite long so an interval session for me would normally have quite a big warm-up in it and quite a, a big cool down in it so they do tend to be quite a bit longer and i end up doing about 16 17k on some of them so i wouldn't use that shoe for these track i tend to do about 35 minutes 40 minutes and it's perfect for that um but yeah once it starts getting to those bigger numbers um i, I wouldn't use this shoe uh, the upper is very comfortable for me. It's very lean. Um, there's not a lot to it. I mean, everything about this shoe is really designed to be lean. It's just sort of cleared out any unnecessary fabrics, weight, padding, anything like that, just to make the, the weight of the shoe really light. Um, but it doesn't skimp on it. So you don't end up with an uncomfortable shoe off, off the back of it. It's still very comfortable. There's just enough padding in the right places um, around the ankle collar. The tongue's uh, got a nice little bit of padding on it as well. And overall, it's 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 a solid balanced shoe when it comes to, to that. There's It's quite clever how the padding and everything sort of fits together. There's a bit of power tape on it as well to give a bit more structure around the top. Um, so it really does hold to the foot quite nicely and sort of straps your foot in nicely without being uncomfortable. The other, the midsole, um, it's this nitrogen infused midsole that's commonplace across pretty much all of um, Puma shoes now, uh, it, and it's really good. It it it's got a nice nice touch of cushioning to it, which is more than I would have expected from a shoe this lean. So there is a little bit of cushioning mainly in the back of the shoe, um, and the outsole is. One of the leaner Puma Grip outsoles, as you can imagine from this shoe, but it's still quite formidable. Um, there's a lot of outsole on this for such a lightweight shoe, and it's very good. It's probably not the, um, the thickest, it's not gonna be the thickest one that you get on um, a Puma running shoe. Some of the other shoes like the Magnify uh, Nitro 2 have a really thick wedge of um, outsole rubber on them. This is a bit leaner, but there's still loads on it. It's really good at gripping. Um, you're turning corners, if you're doing intervals and you're doing a lot of back and forth and things like that, turning around, um, it's great for that. It's just, it's Puma Grip, it's fantastic. Um, I've never tried a bad Puma Grip uh, outsole on a shoe. So that's fantastic uh, for that. Overall, all of that uh, just makes for a really nice, lean, versatile shoe, which is very good for those people that want something that just really focuses on the um, the shorter runs, but want something that maybe is a little bit more versatile and isn't just like a racing flat. There's a bit more to this shoe than what you'd get from a, a completely minimal shoe. Okay, so my verdict on the Puma Liberate Nitro 2 is that it's a great shoe. If, if, if you're the sort of person that wants a lightweight, fast, uh, training shoe or racing shoe if you if you if you like racing in um, older school style lightweight shoes as opposed to more modern complex race shoes this is a great option um, and if this was like five six years ago this would this would be up there with some of the, the best lightweight racers out there so if you're looking for a fast shoe and you don't really want a complex shoe possibly for training this is a really good option I would say that it's versatile in the fact that you can probably do a lot up to a certain point. So if you're running 5Ks, 10Ks, and you want a really light shoe to do that with, then you're gonna do a bit of speed work, but you might wanna run a bit slower, like me doing intervals up to a, an hour or something like that. It's good for that. It's it's a good solid shoe, it's not that expensive, and you get a bit more from it in terms of cushioning than you would in some alternatives. Um, other than that, I do think it's a bit of a niche shoe. Uh, I definitely wouldn't suggest this shoe to a lot of the people I know um, who are, who asked me about shoes. So I've got a lot of friends who have started running or are fairly new to running. Um, I think this is a little bit advanced for them. Uh, I don't think I'd buy this shoe unless I knew I was a fan of more minimal shoes. Um, and I knew that I didn't necessarily need a lot of cushioning in a shoe. So for that reason, I would say that it's, it's a certain type of person that would really like this shoe. Uh, and as part of a rotation, I don't think I know many people that would need this in their rotation. Um, but yeah, if you're running track and stuff like that, it is a solid shoe to have in your collection and it's not that expensive either. Alternatives that you might wanna look at for this. Um, so a lot of the alternatives at the moment do tend to have plates in them. So you look at something like the Super Comp, um, pacer, which is quite similar in the way it feels, but that does have a plate in. Um, although I don't really notice the plate that much in that shoe, so it does feel to me quite similar. This is just a lot more flexible. It's a very flexible shoe. So um, I think it really boils down to that. And obviously this is a lot cheaper than that shoe as well. So if, it's, if it was between this and the Supercomp uh, Pacer, 
I'd probably go for this just for the price and what you actually get from it. Uh, another shoe that you might look out for this is the Saucony Kimbara 14. Um, as a, it, that feels a little bit more cushioned, um, very similar in what it's trying to do. It's quite flexible, lightweight. I'd go for this one um, over that. I just think this is a more solid shoe. It just feels like there's a lot more to it. It's more comfortable. It just feels like you can run a bit faster in it. Um, and it just feels a bit better quality for me than the, than the Kimbara 14. I'd definitely go for this over, over that shoe. Um, so yeah, so there, there we go. That's the uh, Puma Liberate Nitro 2. That's it for me on this uh, full review from Puma Liberate Nitro 2. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell and all those other things. And check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from this road and trail shoes, as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. And if you're going to the caption below, you can also find a link to our podcast that comes out normally once a month, but we're actually doing specials now where we're doing interviews with some other people in the world of running. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time. Oh,